I think that the Milwaukee Bucks are the closest thing in today's NBA to a super team and possibly the next dynasty. And in today's video, I'm going to analyze why. The Golden State Warriors have probably been considered the dynasty over the last decade or so, winning four championships and also winning last year's NBA title. But with their core players getting up there in age, there's got to be a new team that comes in eventually and takes over that crown. And really over the last few years in recent history, we've seen a lot of different teams come in and dominate and win championships and one of those teams was of course the Bucks in 2021 winning the championship and they could have easily done the same last year if Chris Middleton didn't get injured in their second round series against the Celtics and even then they lost in a very hard fought series in a seventh game and if they stay fully healthy they could have won it there too so bottom line I think this team could be a dynasty and I'm going to explain why in today's video. So a couple months ago, I made a video about what really my definition of a super team is in today's NBA, and it's not getting three star caliber players. It's more about a lot of different factors and really four main points. And the Bucks definitely strongly hit three out of these four points, and as we've seen, have actually won a championship in 2021 as well. And those four points for my criteria that, in my opinion, make a championship caliber team in today's NBA is one that you need to have a top 10 defense as an overall team and preferably top five of course two you need to have that one main star player who is one of the 10 best players in the nba and can play consistently at an mvp caliber level three you need to have good spacing and three-point shooting surrounding your teams and guys that can space the floor on the perimeter and catch and shoot the three at a high level and four you need to have some elite coaching and that's the one where arguably the bucks are missing it but let's start off by talking about this team's defense because this is where really where they have become an elite team in the first place and even before they were able to win championships in the years in 2018 and 19 where they struggled to succeed at a high level in the playoffs because they were missing kind of that overall offensive game and the shooting surrounding their team their defense was still elite and that's why they were one of the best regular season teams and how they were able to win championships in the future as well of course it really all centers around Giannis who's one of the best most versatile defenders in the NBA and of course just a freak really on both ends of the floor but especially defensively he's a freak of nature the chase down blocks that he can have how he can turn around and contest and block guys that are going up for alley-oops the way that he is seven feet tall and can still def defend the perimeter at a very high level and also be one of the best rim protectors and pick and roll defenders in the NBA it's really incredible and then you also have a guy like Drew Holiday who they just recently added in the year that they won the championship who's one of the best perimeter defenders if not the best perimeter defender when he's at his best in the NBA an absolute clam god out there has great hands and is one of the best overall defenders in the game as well and then just as an overall defensive unit they have great balance of guys that can guard the perimeter and guard the interior you've got a guy like Brooke Lopez who sometimes isn't great in the pick and roll and is definitely a liability on the perimeter but has turned into a pretty good overall rim protector and shot blocker and they do do a good job most of the time of having him play to his strengths defensively and stay where he's good at and then they've got other guys off of the bench that just do a really good job bringing energy being scrappy and being good on rotations and contesting three-point shots when they're defending the perimeter last year this team had the number one defensive rating in the nba playoffs and of course they did get eliminated in the second round but we've seen consistently this team be near the top or at the top in both the regular season and the playoffs in defensive rating for really the last four to five years and it's really going to stay that way that that's really the main strength of this team when they've had their core guys together and especially now that drew holiday's been here and been here for two years it's going to continue to be one of their if not their biggest strength as an overall team now we got to talk about the whole number one main superstar aspect of this team and of course that is Giannis Antetokounmpo who I think right now is probably the number one best player in the NBA this is such an interesting debate but I would give it to Giannis right now because of his two-way game and his offensive game the way he's able to get out in transition and just dominate inside of the paint is obviously something we've really never seen 
in the history of the game. He's probably the best transition scorer that we have ever seen and is giving himself a chance to, by the end of his career, be one of, if not the greatest power forward we've ever seen in the history of the NBA. I mean, when we look at some stats from last season, he averaged just under 30 points per game about 11 and a half rebounds per game, almost six assists per game, which is a very improved aspect of his game, which is his, his passing and playmaking, which is also a lot because of the fact that the Bucks have better shooting surrounding him now and a better supporting cast, which I'm gonna talk about next. But he does it obviously extremely efficiently because of how dominant he is in the paint. So last year he shot over 55% from the field and over 63% true shooting. And his jump shot is getting a little bit better too. That's obviously the flaw in his game and the reason why some people don't have him as the best player in the game right now. But uh, it is improving a little bit and he doesn't really even need it anyway because no matter how much space you give him, a lot of the vast majority of players aren't going to be able to guard him on the inside. His post game is getting better, his little turnaround hook shots a little bit further away from the net are getting better, and his playmaking, like I said, has been very good as well. And of course, we got to talk about that de defensive side of the game, which I've already talked about. He's one of, if not the best defender in the game, so I think that is what separates him from some of the other players in contention for being the number one player in the league right now. And we've seen times throughout Jonas's career where he struggled a bit more in the playoffs, but really over the last two years, last year when the Bucks won the championship, he has upped his game in the playoffs and his overall playoff stats have been better than his regular season stats. He's got that experience now, he's got that playoff experience, and he thrives now in the playoffs and in the clutch moments of games, which is another reason and another thing that he struggled with early in his career is down the stretch in games, sometimes, I mean, they wouldn't even go to him. Even in 2021, at the early stage of the playoffs, the Bucks would go to Chris Middleton to close out their games. But now they have that one guy in Giannis who you can give him the ball in the post and he can go get you a bucket. And like I said many times on the channel, this is so key for teams really throughout the entirety of NBA history. It's just proven you can't win an NBA championship without that one superstar player. It's only happened a couple times times throughout all of NBA history, but the Bucks have it now, and they've checked that box off of at least my criteria for being a championship caliber team. I think the biggest key for the Bucks, which propelled them in the last two years from being a really elite regular season team that got eliminated in the second round and Eastern Conference Finals to being a team that can win the NBA championship is their three-point shooting and their spacing. This team used to be a horrendous three-point shooting team. When you have a guy like Giannis who all of his offensive game evolves around the paint, you have to have good spacing so that teams can't just easily build the wall without leaving good shooters open and you've got to have guys that can knock down those threes and rack up those assists for Giannis as well and overall just help out the overall offensive flow of this team but really now the Bucks are a good three-point shooting team last year in the regular season as a team they shot 36.6 percent from three which was good for sixth in the NBA and the year prior they were actually top five as well and actually both years they fell off a little bit with their three-point shooting percentage in the playoffs, but it was still good enough to the point where Giannis has good spacing surrounding him, and also their other stars like Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton. Not only are they actually good three-point shooters themselves and can actually create their own three-point shots off of the dribble and still shoot 40% at their best, but also when they're handling the ball and taking it into the paint or potentially taking a mid-range shot or running a pick and a roll with a guy like Giannis or Brooke Lopez, they now have better respectable shooting and spacing around them so that's really key for this team i think it's really the main difference and reason why they were able to win a championship in 2021 and propel to a championship caliber team and it makes sense you look at their roster and you look at the difference of guys that they've brought in in recent years that they've drafted or signed guys like bobby portis who's been a great three-point shooter and in, in addition to this team to help space the floor and provide a lot of energy in other aspects grayson allen's been a good three-point shooter last year pat connington almost shot 40 
percent from three a veteran in george hill who isn't getting as much playing time now but is still a good three-point shooter a guy like wesley matthews and their other two co-stars like i mentioned middleton and drew holiday when they're when they don't have the ball in their hands they can space out the floor as well so the three-point shooting and spacing this for this team has been a huge key and will continue to be that over the next few years and i think those stats are going to keep improving for this team as well now the last part of my criteria that a lot of people will think that the bucks don't have is their coaching and mike budenholzer sometimes it's no secret that sometimes he has trouble making in-game adjustments and for the most part he he's a good coach for this bucks team they have good offensive and defensive systems and get out and transition a lot and that's actually the main key for this team of course led by Giannis. Last year they were third in the regular season in transition points per game and then first in the playoffs and that really is a huge aspect to a team. You get more points that way. That's pretty much their offense and they have a good defensive system but he doesn't do a good job of making in-game adjustments a lot of the time but the thing is is the Bucks still have definitely the first three out of the four and so much talent on this team that there's no denying that they are one of if not the best teams in the NBA. And the fact that they've already won a championship and definitely could have gone back to back if their second best player in Chris Middleton stayed healthy, that shows to me and everything else I've discussed in today's video that this team could potentially be a dynasty and be an absolute problem for the NBA over the next few years. And if you guys ever doubt kind of what my criteria is for what I consider a super team or a championship team, be sure to check out the video about super teams I made a couple months ago that I'm going to be linking at the end of this video and if you don't want to do that then look at every past NBA champion and tell me if they don't have at least three of the things that I've discussed in today's video a top five to ten defense at least a superstar player who has won an MVP in their career or were at least a top five to ten player in the league at that time a good spacing and three-point shooting team that's more of definitely a modern day thing so making sure that they have good spacing and three-point shooting and then good coaching they'll have at least three out of those for all the past NBA champions in recent history and with everything else I've discussed in today's video like I said I think the Bucks are gonna be an absolute problem for the league they could be the league's next super team and super team or dynasty and I want to hear what you guys think so make sure you comment down below your thoughts on the Bucks going into next season and if you agree that they could be the best team in the nba for years to come led by of course who i think is the best player in the league right now and Giannis Antetokounmpo. thank you guys for watching today's video comment your thoughts below and i'll see you on next video